Hey folks, Quillington here and welcome to Let's Try the Kickstarter Beta of Evolution. Now, I don't normally do videos for things that are on Kickstarter, especially video games, because video game development is quite a complicated thing and there's it's, it's just too random whether or not things will work out for so many Kickstarter projects. But, things are very different here with Evolution. First of all, this is a digital version of a existing board game, which means all the gameplay mechanics are already laid out and 100% solid. It also happens to be one of my absolute, absolute favorite board games. I've actually done a video on it before, uh, specifically Evolution Climate. Um, also, this is the demo of the build for their Kickstarter version, which is far from complete and yet is pretty darn slick as is. So I think there's a there's a pretty impressive amount of development that's gonna go in there, which is why I'm gonna go ahead and make an exception and do this video on this uh, game that is still in Kickstarter right now. So uh, Evolution is a board game about creating critters and evolving traits and try not to go extinct as you and your friends compete for a limited amount of food. Uh, at the end of the game, mostly the person who ate the most food won. There's a couple extra little ways to get victory points, but the primary way is literally just whoever eats the most food tends to win the game. So let's go ahead in here and give you a little demo of the gameplay. Uh, so I am set up with three hard opponents over here. We've got that. Again, this is super early, um, like pre-alpha development of this game. So there could be all kinds of little issues in the game. There could be issues with the AI. I don't know. Uh, I do want to note there's uh, this cool stuff over here. I'm currently field interned rank. They've got this idea where you've got, yeah, so you've got your different images that you've got here, but there'll be like ranks and things that you can unlock maybe. I, I don't know. I, th I think they've got some very cool ideas going on here. So let's go ahead and play. Now, um, I play Evolution Climate. Evolution Climate is a standalone expansion, I guess, maybe for Evolution. Um, uh, there's also Evolution Flight. Uh, Evolution Climate I like quite a bit because they had this climate track because you get like cold ages, hot ages, that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of extra stuff in here. Um, the visuals of the digital version of the game here are fairly different from the visuals of the actual board game, but I think they are absolutely absolutely lovely. So, the idea is everyone starts off with a single species. This is our species over here. Uh, everyone starts off with a species that has a population of one and a body size of one and no traits. The image here has nothing to do with anything. It's simply the image of, I don't know, your avatar or, or whatever. Um, at the start of your turn, you get three cards plus one for every species that you have in play, which means you get four. You always have one species. If worst case scenario, your last species goes extinct, you get a new species for free. There's no, there's no elimination mechanic whatsoever. The game is uh, played honestly more or less simultaneously, so things go pretty fast. Um, it, when you're doing with fewer players, uh, like here's a four player game, uh, I think you tend to go one at a time, but um, when we play, we play six players. I think we play six players, and it's perfectly peachy. Uh, we all sort of play our turns at the same time. That works out okay. There's this adorable little dinosaur icon uh, that represents the first player, which does move around. So in the first round, this guy over here on the right is the first player. I'm going to be second, and it's going to go. First thing you have to do at the start of the round, everyone discards, well, sort of discards, plays a card face down into the middle here, into the, the, the food area i think there's a specific name for it i don't remember what it's called but it's, it's the area where food is going to be in the game all of your cards have a food icon in the top left corner and that's how much food is going to be contributed communally for everyone to eat so your first decision is quite tough because whatever you play here you're not going to get to use the card as is you're only going to get it for the food value um let me go and just I'm going to be second player. I'm going to get a decent crack at the food here. I'm going to get rid of Symbiosis right now. So it's going to be worth one food to the middle pool. That goes away. We have no idea what other people put in there. I know my contribution, which is one, but I don't know what other people have contributed to the food pool. Now, uh, the first player just went. It's my turn now to play trait cards again. Uh, when you're playing in real life, you can actually do this simultaneously, which is really neat because... Um, there's, there's no reason at this point that what you do affects one another. Although if you do do it um, simultaneously, you tend to like not reveal what your actions are. Uh, whereas here I know that my neighbor to my right, he has gone ahead, he has created second species. So whenever you want, you can play one of your cards, effectively discard a card to spawn a new species. I have one right now, but I could ditch that and I would add a new species to my setup. 
more species means more things that are eating so more possible place ways to get points also there's ways to interact between your species and again you get a card at the start of your turn which is three plus the number of species more species equals more cards the other thing you can do is you can discard a card to either add plus one to your species population or plus one to your species body size population is possibly the most important of the two because population determines how much food you can eat every turn with population of one this species can only eat one food therefore only score one point maximum body size or population size is six which means if you have a population of six this species could eat up to six food every turn and therefore earn you six points the problem is that you only get to basically take one feed action um on each orbit here um, so not each round, but sort of each orbit of the feeding stage. And there's going to be a good chance that we wouldn't, that we might not be able to feed a population of six, in which case every population that doesn't get fed dies off. So you've sort of wasted cards investing in a larger population. Body size is almost entirely only has to do with carnivores. There are carnivore traits that you can evolve. And then your, your species don't only eat plant food in the middle. Instead, you eat other species. And you can eat people who are smaller than you. So body size is both an offensive and a defensive trait. Um, so let's see. Cooperation is quite cool because every feeding you share one food to your right. So let's say I evolved a species over here and made this guy cooperative. Let, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to burn intelligence here. I'm going to add a new species. Or you know what? Here, I'll add it to my list. It doesn't really matter where it goes because it makes no difference at this point. And I'm going to say, so the species on the left is going to become cooperative. So whenever it eats it passes food to the guy to the right. Um, I've got this hard shell in here. Now I could discard this to add extra population base over here, which might be good to score more points. But when I put this on a species, it gives you an effective plus four body size for defense. I'm going to go and put that on my cooperative species to make him very, very, very hard to kill because he's effectively a size five right now. So I'm going to call that good. I'm going to go ahead and in turn. I could also undo, which is very nice to see. And that... So the rest of the people are going to do stuff. Oh, he just went and made three species. So these are all going to be pretty weak and vanilla, but they're going to be very potent. Or he's going to get extra cards going forward. So we flip over the cards from the middle of the pool. You know, it's going very fast here. But we, we flipped over all the food cards. We added it was seven food into the middle. First player ate first. So his species over here, who is burrowing, cannot be attacked once fully fed. Once this guy is full, and he is, got population of one, he's got one food. This guy's totally full. He cannot be attacked. He's also got long neck, which lets him do one free, get one free food before feeding. So his feed action was actually only to feed this species. This feed species is full because he got a free food from the bank with long neck over here. So you can see some of those mechanics. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go and um, this species is going to eat from the middle of the pool. And because of cooperative, thump, we actually take two food out of here and go there. It doesn't come from the bank. And one of these species is going to go up, uh, extinct. He didn't have enough food to feed all three of his dudes. So he played a whole card to get a hold of the species and got nothing out of it. At the end of the round, all the food on your species cards goes into your food bag over here, which is your total score. At the end of the game, your score is based on your food in your bag, as well as you get a bonus point for every population and every trait on the table. I don't believe you get bonus points for body. Um, but there, So there's points for having species that are left there. In normal evolution, you can only have three trait cards per species. In climate, you can have up to four per species because you're often having to evolve more traits that are like about climate, like thick fur to stay warmer or mud wallowing to stay cooler, for example. Um, I don't know about flight. Flight has basically a second feeding area for flying creatures that can evolve and, and work with different things, but I've never played it. So once again, we've got to put more food into the middle. So again, we're, we could we could put down like big amounts of food or we could put down almost no amounts of food whatsoever. Um, which is, you know, like, where do we go? Well, we get, we're going to be first player. We get first crack of the food in the middle. And we're going to get a free feeding on this character over here as well, which is kind of nice. I've got another cooperative card, which is kind of interesting. Because we can actually chain our food all the way down. I'm tempted to do that. I'm going to keep throwing out intelligence here. So we're going to add very little food to the pool. And no food was left over. Food would carry over if there was excess. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to evolve... Um, I'm going to evolve another species over here. My middle species is going to pick up cooperation. We're going to go ahead and... 
Um, give this one Burrowing. So it can't be a, a, um, attacked when it's full. And the horns, I don't know if I want to evolve it, or... I think I might want to get plus one pop on my strong, hard-shelled people. That's what I'm going to do. Plus one pop. Hopefully we'll get a second feeding out of this. We'll see how it goes. So that's my turn. So I was first player, so everyone else playing trait cards, getting an extra species. Ooh, he's going to have three traits on the species and a second population. Now, luckily, no one appears... Oh, we've got plus one body size. We might have someone going carnivore over here. Ooh, lots of species here. He gets the free feeding from Long Neck. Then we flip over the cards. We're going to get... Well, only five food in the middle. Now, here's the thing. My first guy here is going to eat one of these. And we're actually going to grab three food at the middle because it's scavenger and it chains down. The problem is I won't be able to feed the second unit of population. Which I should have thought about probably more. So, that... I lose one unit of population, unfortunately. But... The Long Neck's going to survive because he gets to sneak in the early food. Everyone else is going to go extinct. That was a m crazy mass extinction over here. Because there's just not enough food. Now, he should get a species back for free. At the start of your turn, I think, if you don't have a species, you get it. That might just be a climate thing. We'll find out. Yeah, he gets a species for free. Okay. So, yeah, you're never out of the game. But that's going to hurt a lot. We've got five food bank, which I think is a little bit better than everyone else is doing. So, the long neck is good. Do I? I don't suppose I've got, got pack hunting if we want to do some carnivore stuff, but we haven't gotten a carnivore call. Warning call is actually fantastic for our setup over here. We could keep chaining co cooperation as well. Oh, we do have a carnivore card. And I would love to show off carnivore stuff, but we've got such a fantastic setup going on here. I could drop another cooperative over here and actually spawn a fourth species. And we actually have twin warning calls. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Now, we're going to be the last player to feed here, because this is player one over here. So we actually want to make sure we've got lots of food in the middle. Um, I'm going to discard a pack, tack, pack hunting. So we're not looking to be carnivore. It's one of the most food um, intensive ones we've got. So, yeah, and we can play right now, like, it's, it's waiting, but there's no reason we could just wait. I'm going to see if anyone's building up a lot of body size. Because that could be a sign that someone's going with a really aggressive carnivore, but no. He's got a body size there, but doesn't have a trait. He, that could be a defensive thing, so that's going to be okay. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop cooperative here, so we keep chaining the food down here. I'm going to discard scavenger. Scavenger lets you... Um, uh, receive a free food every time a carnivore attacks, which is very nice, and go there. So that way, if this guy feeds, it goes all the way down the chain. This guy can't be attacked when full, so I'm going to drop a warning call on him, which will protect people on either side. It doesn't protect him, but a, car a carnivore has to have the ambush trait to attack someone to the right or to the left. If I put another warning call here, we're sort of chaining things up and protecting a lot. Now, what do I do with my last card? I can't get... Oh, I can't actually still get another species. I don't think there's a limit on species. This guy would be a little bit more vulnerable, so likely we can feed him. I'm just worried that we're not going to be able to feed twice. So I'm just thinking about dropping down a... I could just save this for later. In case things change. We might want a carnivore up. You know, I'll save it for next turn. That's going to be okay. There's no hand limit as far as I know. And I'm not going to draw fewer cards because I've got a trait in my hand. Okay, that's a lot of food, actually. Now, I kind of wish I'd grown my pop. I mean, he is doing a little bit of symbiosis stuff. But yeah, we're going to have no problem. We could feed here. And we're going to grab four food in one go. And feed everyone and just be done. Thump, thump, thump. But I think everyone's going to be able to feed all their stuff this time. There's some excess population here. Yeah, there's food left over for next round as well. Okay, I think we can very safely assume we can grow our population size here. And in fact, I think we'll do that fairly aggressively. Second carnivore card. Foraging is very nice because you get to take an additional plant food when you feed. Okay, I'm going to put a carnivore here. We're going to put lots of food in the middle. And we're going to assume it's going to be a food-rich round. Uh, we have fertile where we can grow our population for free. But my idea is I'm going to put foraging on this guy on the left so he gets double food. I'm going to grow his population as well. There's the ambush trait, which actually removes a food from the middle if you play it. There's an intelligence of minus two as well. 
Um, maybe I'll put Fertile on this guy. So he will grow over time. But yeah, I think I'm going to grow you to... I'm going to do this. Assuming we can feed twice over here, all these guys are going to be fed. I'm happy I saved an extra card. Let's see how it goes. I wasn't actually paying attention to what other people were doing. Whoa, look at this. Five population. So if there's lots of food, he's going to be eating a lot. Now, whether or not he can eat quickly, we'll have to see. Oh, he evolved to a carnivore. He's not... He's going to go for... Oh, no, this is really bad. Carnivore who gets to act first is very dangerous because this guy's not full. Okay, thank you for not going after me. This guy's not full, so he could be attacked, and that could break a lot of the chain. So when a carnivore attacks someone else, what happens is they kill off one unit of population on that target, and they get food equal to the body size of the thing that they attack. So he, I didn't, I didn't actually check, but he must have attacked something with a body size 2, because he's got 2 food in there. 2 of his population is fed. He's got a body size 3, so he will be able to attack this guy, except that he won't in a second, because I'm going to do this. There's only 5 food left, actually. There's not as much food in the middle as I'd hoped. Luckily, I'm going to grab four. Oh, apparently, I didn't realize, Scavenger oh, takes an additional plant food. So I'm still going to lose a bunch of population here. And this guy's still not fed, which means he can't hide. All right, so he loses one pop. And then it looks like this guy gets to act twice, but just everyone else had to pass because they had no more eating to do. So, I lose some of the extra pop. I was really thinking we'd be able to get a lot more food out of the middle, especially with all these carnivores. I'm actually sh really shocked. Um, we didn't lose any species, but we wasted some cards, increased our population, and not being able to take advantage of it. Symbiosis is very nice. This spe It's actually really nice to combo with Warning Call, because Symbiosis, the, the species with the Symbiosis card, can't be attacked if the species to their right is bigger. Um, I'm still going to stay as a... Um, so I'm going to be eating twice, which is going to be good. I'll be eating before the carnivores go. I'm going to stay as a vegetarian here, an herbivore. Get lots of food into the middle. I will probably not grow this species, because I want to make sure that he eats, like, on the first go. Yeah, fertile didn't trigger. That's if there's food at the start of the turn, then you get to grow, but there wasn't any. I contributed six. It should be a lot. Um... These guys, as long as I eat first, these guys should all be safe. I wonder if I'm going to be able to eat twice this time. Climbing's good. We do eat quite quickly. It's po oh, we can drop another freaking warning call, which is amazing. Unless someone evolves ambush. Do I want to grow this guy's body size? Because he's effectively a size 5. Someone could go and buff him up. The shell doesn't help you on attack either. I'm actually wondering if that might be a good idea. Because he's sort of the linchpin of so many things that we do. We'll grow his size. I might try to grow a pop again and hope that we get another you know, good turn. Let, let's give it a try. Let's see what we can do. All right. We're going to hope for a lot of food. I like how the claws are out on the carnivore. Like, the visuals in this digital version, a 10 out of 10, man. This is great. Oh, you're growing your size. You're now size 6, so you can actually attack my... Oh, no! Oh, no, you've got pack hunting. Pack hunting adds your population to its size. This is very scary. Well, we're going to grab tons of food. And if you've grabbed the food, even if your species gets eaten and stuff like that, you don't lose the food. And you still score those points. Oh, oh, nice animation of the pack hunting, too. Now, they may have set the AI to be super friendly to the players, because I'm clearly ahead. I'm leading here. So, I would uh, expect any any player to be targeting me. Okay, we've done that. We were not going to be able to feed over here. You get attacked and we lose one. Do you have ambush? Oh, you have ambush! Now, one of the things that's interesting is I might want to grow these species to be bigger. Ooh, neat little animation there. Um, to be bigger, not necessarily big enough to not be attacked, 
But you, the amount of food you get is based on the size of the creature you eat. So if we just make ourselves big enough that they're going to fill up after one attack, we're never going to lose that much population. Defensive herding is really powerful. Because it adds... Um, we only have it set up. Although, if I defensive herding this guy and just boost his population to the max. I'm the first person to eat. I got a lot of food in there. We still have two of the symbiotic guys, so this guy's going to be fed indirectly. I don't know if it's worth doing that. I think we hard shell him. And just try to make our guys a little bit bigger. Tell you what, we'll drop a fertile on there as well. He might get bigger. Like, might get more population later on. Um, still want this guy to get fed as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'm going to go and bring up our population to the max so that he's not quite as vulnerable here. So he can't be attacked, except by the pack hunting guy, which he totally can be attacked by. I'm going to go and make him make both these slightly bigger so that anyone attacking me actually gets filled up a bit. It's like this weird thing. Make yourself, in a sense, more appealing, but not really. Like, as a carnivore, you tend to go after the people of small body size because you're more likely to be able to do more damage to an enemy player. Oh my god, so he's effectively size 12 with the pack hunting here. Having long neck on the burrowing would be a nice one because it would let him really fill up a lot faster. More carnivores! Oh my god, there's carnivores everywhere! Okay. Well, let's see. So we'll still do this. Still get a lot of food in one feed action. So we're still earning a lot of points very quickly. Okay, he can't be attacked again though. Because he's at his population cap and now he's burrowing. So we still want to feed this guy to earn points. It's not going to go in uh, cooperative down. Carnivores can attack each other, by the way. And carnivores can no longer eat plant food. So at this point, I've got like dibs on all the plant food, really. I mean, a couple extra little herbivore races, but not very many. We're still scoring a lot of points, but I'm getting much, much, much more scared. Especially since we're going to be going last, so we're not going to be filling our burrowing guy. And then, game complete! Done! Um, I don't remember the, uh, the mechanic for the, the game ending. I think, oh, I think there's a, there's a limited number of, of traits? Yeah, that's what it is. The, the, the trait pile that you draw from, um, there you go, last round over here. Um, it runs out. And when it runs out, that's the last turn. And then what happens... You never actually truly run out because you do, like, reshuffle the discard pile so that people can still draw the traits. But once the core uh, draw pile has been expired, that signals the last turn. I did score the most amount of points. We had, like, a good start with a lot of ability to feed. Again, I do kind of expect that since we are, like, several months away from release. Again, this is the Kickstarter pre-alpha demo um, that the AI is probably going to get some tuning. And I have a ton of experience with this game because, again, my buddies and I, we play this constantly. Um, I played it fast here, fast and loose, but uh, still expected things to work pretty well. So, anyway, I figured it was worth highlighting this game because I think it's just very, 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 very exciting. It is going to be available for all kinds of mobile devices and PC and all those things. Um, the the price on the Kickstarter, like, you can get, like, the mobile device one for quite cheap, like, four bucks. So, I don't know if there's going to be, like, you know, microtransactions, like, for extra purchases or something to unlock more game features. I don't know what their plans are vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the expansion content. Again, I really enjoy playing Climate. Evolution Climate, I think it's fantastic. You get that fourth trait, you've got this really interesting uh, climate mechanic that has massive impacts on how much food, because as it get, the weather gets warmer, you tend to have more food, and when it gets colder, you have less food. Although, if it gets way too hot, then the food crashes completely. And if it gets too hot, big creatures tend to die off. If it gets too cold, small creatures tend to die off. So you're having to evolve all these things. And, and so the balance of like how big your creature should be isn't just based around the question of carnivores. It really involves a lot more sort of things. So that's that's why my, that's my favorite iteration. And I'm sure at some point they'll do it. Um, a, a digital version is just like a no-brainer for this game. I think it looks lovely. I really like their implementation. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they'll probably be all, you know multiplayer and all that stuff later on. But... Again, super, super early uh, pre-alpha Kickstarter demo of Evolution. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.